Welcome to the third episode of Babylon is Burning and today we talk about WeChat. In the studio today we have Yan Lu and Mingyi Hao who are experts on the topic of WeChat. But you may wonder what is WeChat and I hope you can give me an answer to that question. Uh, WeChat is an instant messaging social app in China. It features some multifunctionality and nowadays it has already accumulated 1 billion daily active users. Okay, so it's maybe even the biggest app that we have in terms of user base around the world? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do Chinese people then use WeChat in addition to the social media platforms that we all know, like Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, WhatsApp, or do they only use WeChat? Um, that's a different story. I need to explain that uh, within China, uh, it's uh, not possible to access uh, Facebook or YouTube without climbing over the Great Wall. Okay, so you have two great walls then now, a <laughs> real one and a digital one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. uh, could we maybe yeah. take a look at WeChat um, and see what the structure of the platform is like? Of course, I will show you how it works and uh, how the functionalities combine in WeChat. Now let's uh, have a look at my account. We can see the first uh, functionality is uh, chats. In here we can do uh, all the things like we have on WhatsApp, uh, text message, voice message. And what's different is uh, we can send many more emojis on it. And here I want Red to show packets. you. Yes. What is that? Red you packets? Know it. Uh, you know in China we send, uh, we give uh, red envelopes to people in holidays uh, or when people get married as a symbol of good wishes. Mm -hmm. And what's in with the envelope? Is it just a wish or...? With the cash, cash in it. Oh, it's a money gift? It's money yes. gift. Yeah. yeah. But now you don't have to do it in cash form. You can do it virtually. Yeah, in digital form. Okay. form. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you also do that with f like f congratulations yes, for yes. birthdays or...? Mm -hmm. Yes, birthday. But most of the time, I think Spring Festival. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then how much money do you send oh, to it's people? It depends on the, the local traditions in different areas. I think now 100, 200 uh, RMB yeah. for children. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's about 30 euro. Oh, that's yeah. quite, that's that's quite something. Yeah, something. Yeah, that's quite something. <laughs> okay. Uh, maximum you can send 200 RMB uh, in red envelope. But if you want to uh, transfer more money to your mm -hmm. friend, you can use the transfer function. I will click on the WeChat pay part, and now you can see the money and wallet, the two functions in it. Mm -hmm. When I click on money, then you can see the barcode or QR code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know when you uh, go to the supermarket, I if you show this uh, barcode or it's QR code? Mobile payments. Yeah. Yep. Within the wallet, you see, there's uh, cars, there's... Oh, uh, we see your balance. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more than, than yesterday, actually. <laughs> yeah, because my mom didn't click on ah. the red envelope, yeah, so yeah. it's returned to okay. my account. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And so people can share what's happening in their daily life in the moments part, or they can share some articles and uh, similar to Facebook, your friends on WeChat can give some up, leave comments, and people can interact in this part. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that after the commercial break. Every step online leaves digital footprints. We create a digital self. Today, Cultures and societies are shaped by digitalization and globalization. We send chat messages, artists expand their work to vlogging, and we're connected with different people, places, and cultures 24-7. During our program Online Culture, 
you study culture in this digitalizing and globalizing world. Digitalization influences the shape of communication and cultural products. We have always changed and changed our behavior according to the context we find ourselves in. What is new about digital environments is that now we can crop, filter, Photoshop, and in other ways edit our self-representation. Graduate as an independent thinker who will be essential for tomorrow's job market. Visit our campus, www.tilburguniversity.edu. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. And I believe, Yen, that you want to explain a little bit about the role of emojis in WeChat? Yes. Um, but before we march on the topic, I would like to show you uh, how the currently popular emojis look like. Okay. Yeah. They are stick figures. Some are naughty, some are bitchy, some are violent, some mm -hmm. are dirty. But uh, with the growing presence of uh, uh, senior uh, citizens on WeChat, there became more and more senior emojis catered to the taste of the seniors. Let's <laughs> have a look. It's so funny because on all of these emojis you see really young people portrayed. Yeah. It's a symbol of uh, growth, of uh, happiness, of uh, prosperity. So these are happy emoji. Yes. That's the uh, was drastically different from the uh, young people emojis. They symbolize uh, very positive images, very positive texts with uh, bright colors, uh, which are accepted as uh, good manner okay. uh, by the seniors. Yeah, yeah. And so what, what made these emoji so successful mm -hmm. with, with the seniors? Or is this a special population on WeChat? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I do believe senior population is a very important presence on WeChat. So if we can see some, let's say, senior people's uh, photos here, so maybe we can show it here. Yes, these are the type of pictures they try to, uh, let's say, uh, cast on themselves. So actually, previously, uh, senior citizens are not on the internet. Mm -hmm. This is because, well, they cannot type. They cannot type romanticize the Chinese, that is Latin characters. Okay. And this is because in the 1950s, in 1960s, they didn't learn that. That was cultural revolution, and you don't learn Western things, right? But after we have WeChat and also the touch screen, they can write on it, and they can basically shout voice messages. And that is why WeChat and also touch screen basically include the whole population of senior generation into the internet landscape. So here we see the elderly mom, but I assume that you also just have regular yes. middle-aged <laughs> parents on uh, WeChat? Yes, we not only have old parents, but also young parents. And so do you also see in that layer uh, of, of people the sharenting ID of, yes. of, of parents yes, oversharing? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. They subscribe to uh, parenting accounts. Yes, this is a subscription account you can uh, see every day on, on WeChat. And uh, young parents are now getting all kinds of knowledge on this type of account on WeChat. And it's also interactional, so you can search the type of information that is the most uh, suitable for your kids. So from different age, different, let's say, functions. So you can also download all kinds of resources, like uh, printable uh, charts or printable uh, templates, so you can play with your child uh, while also teaching some, something to him or her. And this is a trend of intensive parenting nowadays in China. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's the, the, the tiger mom and the tiger dad yes, ID? Yes, yes, and really intensive. And they really try to transform play into a uh, study. And uh, how does that impact the life of children, do you think? Wow, well, I can't say miserable, but then they indeed try to pre everything, prepare everything before schooling. So this type of uh, accounting really uh, target to uh, preschool children and okay. they have already begun to learn uh, school curricula. Mm -hmm. We'll talk uh, more about WeChat and the business side of things after the break.
Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. So Mingyi, we saw in Jan's overview that you can use WeChat for all kinds of money transfers. Yes. So I assume that means that business also takes place on yes, WeChat. Yes, it thrives actually. I'm going to show you some of the WeChat business examples here. Yeah, you can see the picture. Mummies are holding their baby in business conference. And this is a type of informal economy in China nowadays. Informal economy, by that I mean it's not necessarily regulated by the state. It's not necessarily legal. But however, it actually gives the freedom of housewives that they can, let's say, sell some products while they are still at home. And they can use phone at one hand, another hand they are holding their baby. So this is type of ideal image of doing rich at business. However, I think it's, it's kind of, you know, it's tapped into this anxiety in Chinese women nowadays. On the one hand, they, they want to have female independence. On the other hand, they want to, they still hold the traditional gendered family values nowadays. And that is why this type of image are, are quite popular in China now. So it allows them to kind of compromise those two conflicting yes, or the yes. dialectic between those two roles? Yes, that's the ideal, I, I have to say. So sometimes they always portray this, this positive image of uh, female entrepreneurship. And it also go along with the dominant ideology that all Chinese people should participate in the process of creation and innovation, have your own business. But if you look into them, they always share this type of self-help messages or success messages. It means that, well, if you are a miserable housewife, don't blame the society, don't blame patriarchy. So try to do some business like us. So they try to individualize the, the problem in the social structure. But if you look into them, they actually, they are not selling product. They are selling the selling pr practices. They are okay. not talking about the products. And this is the gray area. This is the, let's say, informal area. Because they, are, they try to recruit more, let's say, sailors, sailor agents. And they can sell product to the lower level sailors. And in that case, they get certain money. And the so lower it's like a pyramid scheme. Yes, exactly, pyramid scheme. So it's not legal in China. But however, this type of business model can thrive on WeChat. And is the government trying to regulate that? Definitely. Nowadays, it's a, a huge scandal break out in this type of business. And uh, I think it's going to be, let's say, more regulated in near future. OK, so you are both on WeChat. Yes, Do you yes. have a business on WeChat? I don't have one. Do you have one? Uh, I was doing some small business on yeah, WeChat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what? you are selling something like, say, uh, say the, the local Dutch food or local yeah. Dutch, yeah, souvenirs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there is interesting business opportunities for us to be found uh, on WeChat. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Well, we'll conclude with that. So this was our third episode, and we hope to see you again for our next episode, which will be on online dating. <laughs>